Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Trainers Forum. Tonight, it's Season 1, Episode 2. And in this particular episode, we'll be packing the wonderful world of Airsoft. Now, a lot of you have probably heard about it, may have even tried to play it. But how many of you know the, the true history, the present status, and the possible directions that the sport is going to take? So I'm sure some of you or many of you are, are just downright curious. So tonight, I'm joined by uh, two other stalwarts of the sport. First of all, the father of Airsoft himself, <laughs> call sign almighty. That's Rex Villarosa. Welcome to the virtual stage, Rex. Yeah. And of course, uh, Con Abraham, who I've some of you may have seen <laughs> during the during the episode one where we talked about emergency training and how it needs to be more effective and relevant. So he joins us tonight because Con is also one of the earliest members of AGL, which is what you, what you call Action Gamers League, which will be explained in greater detail later. Uh, one more would have joined us and he is a real hoot to have uh, in any group. But unfortunately, he had to attend to other urgent things. So for tonight, it's Rex, call sign almighty. Con, call sign, if you don't mind my saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Insect man. Yes. And yes. of course, yours truly, your host, Dino Santos, call sign knife man. Oh, by the way, we're not the ones who come up with these names. And sometimes we get baptized with them. So... Uh, let me start out by asking uh, Rex, uh, how did you how did you come to be called Almighty? Uh, my radio call sign. Oh, okay. So uh, you know, people would radio you during the game, and then uh, CB days, Citizens Band days. Oh my goodness, Th those were. They those things went back even as far as the seventies, so you must have yeah. had like a like a tower. Uh... Yeah, we did. We had, and at, at the time, we had one of the more powerful transmitters around, so I could step on anybody. <laughs> cool, <laughs> Almighty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, what an appropriate name, therefore. <laughs> and Con, let me let me turn to you for 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 this one. How on earth did you get called Insect Man? <laughs> Actually, I don't really use a call sign. It's okay. more of a moniker. Only in a private game, it's called. I, I call myself Crow. Insect Man is like the shortened version of my email insect machine oh so, okay there you go just like that um, I've, I've always thought that it's appropriate because you've managed to stay slim and you know you got to not like the rest of us good allegory <laughs> yeah so okay lang no uh, ako naman, I, I think i didn't call myself knife man if i'm not mistaken it's either you or or ray who called me because of my Incessant collection. I was always building a collection of new. I, I think it's Ray. Ah, si Ray nagbinyag sa akin. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't mind because I, I like the call sign anyway. <laughs> so, to begin our show tonight, I'd like to take our viewers on a trip down memory lane where we will be essentially looking at uh, the history the history of airsoft so that uh, we can better explain it. So 
Um, these are our pictures, and of course, uh, the picture of Ray who couldn't join us tonight. And according to Wikipedia, this is the definition of airsoft. And so our viewers, I'm sure, can read this. But, you know, I love the, the definition that Rex had, which is way simpler than this one. Uh, Rex, could you tell our viewers um, what to you is airsoft? Well, as uh, I mentioned earlier before the meeting, airsoft simply means a low-powered air gun. Soft air gun. So the, the Japanese coined the term airsoft as uh, opposed to a hard air gun where oh. you fire where you fire uh, metal BBs or metal pellets. Airsoft guns fired plastic pellets. Mm. In other words, non-lethal. Um, non, yeah, low, low powered, non-lethal, almost uh, non-hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now for our viewers out there, uh, I think the law defines lethal as 600 feet per second, you know, 600 feet per second is the speed at which a projectile travels. Most airsoft uh, toys or replicas, uh, back in Rex's day, at the very start with Tokyo Marui, the speed was at around, how fast were, was it, Rex? Okay. Um, muscle velocities were uh, restricted to below one joule. Or the Japanese anyway, they had they had um, controlling body. Okay. Called the ASGK, the Airsoft Gun Kai, or organization. Na yung it imposed restrictions on the industry, on the manufacturers themselves. Uh, they can only make. Well, under Japanese laws, they can only shoot 0.2 BBs below 300 FPS. Okay, which is, of course, a very, very safe velocity. It's, it's not... 0.9 joules. Mm. Okay. So, for a long while, all airsoft guns, whether pistol or rifle, would shoot only 300 FPS using a 0.2 gram BB. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the benchmark, okay? When the UK uh, put up their own airsoft rules, the limit went up to one joule or 330 FPS. Okay, now that will start to sting. <laughs> Not so much, but before anything over 300 was wow, powerful. <laughs> <laughs> In the US, the limit is 400 FPS. Oh. Now that limit is more, uh, was put up by uh, mostly for insurance purposes. Oh, okay. All right. Because there, there's some liability, of course, when games... Yeah, insurance liabilities. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then here in the Philippines, in current, we we used to follow those, uh, no, okay. Uh, when we started, we we went with 200, 300 FPS. Okay. And then 300 30 FPS, right. then 400, but then as time went on, people kept on upgrading and upgrading and upgrading. <laughs> okay. Until they got the FEO, the firearms office, to compromise with 550 FPS. Holy moly. Uh that's strong enough to puncture like a coke and can 
on both sides, right? At that yeah. Point. Oh my gosh. Now, let me ask Con briefly. Um, as a first responder and a certified firefighter, um, I'm, I'm sure you've seen your share of injuries uh, sustained mm-hmm. by players uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in games. No? Um, could, you, could you describe to us um, the extent of the injuries and what things should be done to stay safe when you engage in the sport? Well, usually the injuries that's, that's been caused is by the high velocity okay. and that the, within 20 meters range to, to close in fighting. And usually it's deeper well oh. okay. and to the cheek and to, to the arms mostly. Yes. Usually it's, it's tolerable because it's like an unwritten rule that you just take accountability for it. It's either yeah. that accountability that you hit someone, you ask apology, and yeah. when you got hit, you just shake it off. I've had my few shares of nasty <laughs> welts myself, and I don't really mind. I had my two lips busted. Oh my gosh! Uh, my near near my ear, bro. Yeah. Uh, I had my head busted, <laughs> oh. and also I had my neck scraped by the by the tickets. So I don't really mind. Yeah. Uh, let, let me assure the viewers out there that the, the game is in reality quite safe because we do have a boatload of safety gear that we wear. Like, for example, at a game, they'll always say mask down. So, of course, we, we put down our mask and that's meant to protect the eyes, the face. And people wear uniforms. Uh, when we do get hurt from time to time, and I've, I've been hit here as well, and I recall one of my teammates in Praetoria and saying, do you know you're bleeding? And I said, I ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> <laughs> got time uh, to knock. Yeah, the predator <laughs> reference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cultural difference plays a big part in this. Yeah. Uh, in the days when players didn't have access to chronographs no, to measure velocities. Mm-hmm. The Japanese observe a simple rule. If your gun if your gun is strong enough to give the other player a wealth, <laughs> you apologize. Okay. You get a warning. If the hit bleeds, the shooter is out of the game. Oh, okay. Simple. <laughs> okay. Boy, I love those rules. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They well, we just... used to we used to follow that same logic. Hmm. That's why I, I'm more for controlling uh, power than than putting the onus of uh, responsibility on the players to protect themselves with, it, with protective gear. All right. Now, um, the Japanese would have it na you should not hurt the other players. Eh. It's, it's your responsibility not to hurt your opponent. Right. Mm-hmm. So keep your gun safe. Mm-hmm. Huh? Over here, there's an arms race. Then it becomes <laughs> a, it becomes a target's responsibility to wear a mask, armor, you know, short of being Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I'd like to show a picture uh, that shows Rex and a few of his his colleagues back in the day, um, <laughs> where Action Games League was really, really at its uh, height. Uh, Rex, just out of curiosity, at its height, uh, and also uh, maybe as a primer to our viewers, uh, when did AGL officially begin? Officially, 1985. Okay. Yeah, all right. 1985. Unofficially, even before that. <laughs> <laughs> 
early right. yeah. I love the slogan that you have here and um, I'd love to, for our viewers to hear it from you. Yeah, we blaze the trail, others follow. <laughs> yeah, hey, there you go. I'm sure a lot of uh, AGL players or former players, wherever they are, really <laughs> wanted to hear you say that because uh, it'll bring back a lot of good memories. Uh, and then, of course, on Facebook, we have this group that's been created and it's been around for quite a while and it's still active up to now. Uh, no matter where the former players are, whether they're in the U.S., you know, like Stan or, or the others, uh, they still do post here and keep in touch. Um, you were telling me earlier about how AGL was the first in so many things about Airsoft. So here in this picture, uh, it looks like you're at the gun emplacement, and this is in Corregidor, as you mentioned earlier. Yes. We were first to play on the rock. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the rock. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, first to play in Subi. Oh right, yeah. yeah. You were yeah. first to play in Baguio, TMA. Marine Base Ternate. That's first, yeah, first to play in Marine Base Ternate. Oh man. And that was before the days of Facebook, so of course the pictures aren't <laughs> aren't as plentiful as they, they yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe if not for the floods, we would have more pictures. <laughs> 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 and the bugnas up more taking even, particularly the in college of we had. Um, we had several boards, collage boards, we made for the gun show. Oh. The, we used it during uh, 1996 mm. gun show. And we had some even from the 1989 gun show. Wow. Uh, well, they got flooded. <laughs> Sayang, ano? Sayang, <laughs> tap -lap. Uh -oh. Marami, we lost a lot of pictures. Eh. Mm -hmm. Really, really too bad. Yung, uh, a lot of nice pictures taken. Valdez Farm, <laughs> Rolling Hills, uh, Yung in some other places all around Metro Manila in the provinces. Yeah, like Area 51. <laughs> I remember that as well. Yeah, and and, and uh, the one near the floodway uh, where it was... Piscor. Piscor. Yeah, Piscor. Yeah, Piscor. Yeah. 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 Piscor. Piscor was our home for some four or five years. Wow, I'm glad I, I had a chance to enjoy that, you know, even for a, yeah. a few games. Yeah, Rolling Hills, we were in Rolling Hills from 1991 to, to 2000. What well, that? That's oh, no. wow, that's yeah, a very long time, something like that. Uh -uh. At least eight years. Mm. I'd like to let Rex know that uh, AGL did create its own spin-off groups that are still very active up to now. And this is this is it, the Praetorian Airsoft team, which has its own Facebook uh, page. So... Yeah. Uh, ano As the name, we're supposed to be a league. So they're supposed to be smaller teams. Yes. Uh -huh. Yung, the original composition of AGL was five teams. Yung, the, the passing side, which is, was ours, yung Gypsy. And then there are those from Malabon. Then the La Salle boys. And then the South Side boys from Paranaque. And, well, I forget the other one now. Yung Vasan one. So, okay. you would say that at its height, there were like uh, 
more than 400 uh, active members? Um, we didn't really have a regular roster until around 2000. But at its peak, we, we normally had an attendance of mga maybe two, three hundred in a weekend. Wow. <laughs> regular is... games would number close to 200. Mm -hmm. Not just regular weekend games. Uh, I, I can imagine parking would have been uh, a challenge at that level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hindi pa kasama dun yung ano. Um, the only yung we baga ano eh, we go over 200 it's SOP na eh. Mm. Eh, ano uh, SRO sorry. <laughs> and being room only. <laughs> True. We, we uh, had more there were more people than we could actually accommodate in uh, play site. That's why, uh, that's why other play sites catered to the spill and then they 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 mushroomed. Our name is for this, yeah, so it's a different from people that we use also that uh, that's not the paid one. We don't have any particular plan. We just uh, play this episode. Uh, we're, we're not quite used to such a fast paced game. Just playing, oh, you know, you know, you know. playing in, in the field. Uh, there you are. You know, where you can hide. Here does not be. Hindi na nga yung player na nakatira malapit sila parante. Ah, si Allen. Si Allen. Si Allen. No, no, hindi si Allen. Yung ano? Florante. Florante. Hindi si Allen. Si, Flora, si Florante nasa Sanjang Sora eh. Hindi <laughs> si Florante nasa kanto lang namin. Mm -hmm. Oh, pero meron pa isa na. Yung ano, yung PUP. Nag-aaral ng PUP. Culinary? Ay, hindi ko matandaan. Hindi ko na matandaan yun. Hindi ko na siya matandaan eh. <laughs> Pero parang, parang familiar ka yun. Nandun siya sa video, nandun siya sa video eh. <laughs> Baka nyo mo siya. Um, May finger moment na ako eh. <laughs> Sila lang ako siya, hindi ko matandaan yung pangalan. Uh -oh. That must have been a wonderful walk down memory lane for for <laughs> of you to see old friends. And and I wanted to show the viewers the difference between paintball and airsoft. So I'd like to leave the floor now to both of you to say compare the two. Um well airsoft would fire six mm BBs, plastic BBs. Right. Paintball would fire half inch <laughs> uh, gelatin capsules with paint. Mm. I have a feeling those would leave bigger welts <laughs> that'll last. Uh, not just welts, oh. bruises. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, no wonder those guys were running as fast as they did. <laughs> well, um, you know, back in the nineties, I mean, the main difference between airsoft and paintball would be the form factor. Okay. Airsoft guns look like real guns. True, true. Uh, paintball guns look like pieces of pipe put together. <laughs> oh, yes. And, uh, but that's, that's, that's how uh, I that was part of, uh, uh, that wasn't exactly their fault. Right. 
<laughs> because during that time in the US, they cannot sell anything that looked like a real gun. Yeah, well, for, for very, very obvious they, reasons. They, yeah. yeah, they were restricted from producing lifelike mm -hmm. or gun-like paintball guns. Mm -hmm. That's why they lost a lot of players over to Airsoft because Airsoft would lend itself to dressed up games. Eh? Oh, right, yeah. yeah it, it's a natural progression eh? mm -hmm. from just playing with guns to dressing up mm -hmm. in cosplay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and paintball guns don't, don't, are not quite suited for for no for dress up because they don't look like the real guns right but now they do <laughs> yeah i've seen the the magazines that have been coming out and websites and it's amazing how how lifelike or how realistic even paintball looks now yeah they had they simply had to follow mm -hmm. no. <laughs> Ang ano nila na last kinal nila nun eh, if airsoft guns could look real, why why couldn't paintball guns do the same? Let me turn to Con now and and ask him uh for his for his thoughts about you know um why you prefer airsoft over paintball because you know both have been available for a long time and yet you took the airsoft route. First of all, I was exposed to the photocopy poster of AGL back in SM City in North um, Nova Fontana, if I believe the yeah. store, which pasted okay. the survival games, Contact, Rex oh. Villarosa, oh. <laughs> and all those okay. things. And that's why I chose Airsoft between paintball. But, okay, but here's the thing. Back in the day, Airsoft is discreet. It was under the radar because of the idea it looks like a real gun. Right. Paintball, on the other hand, is more accepted, more mainstream. Mm -hmm. That's why when I created my thesis in USC in fine arts for advertising major, I focused on Paintball Gotcha Incorporated. Now, Vince Padilla asked me because I introduced myself that I'm into Airsoft. He's, he asked me, why did you choose paintball and you're an airsoft player? And I simply said, because we're discreet and we're not supposed to advertise or tell ourselves openly. That's why I chose paintball. So that's the idea. I chose paint uh, airsoft between paintball. The idea of, you know, like the being prudent, being discreet, and being first to know airsoft than paintball. Okay, thank you so much, Con. Uh, I myself uh, played a few games of paintball, and what frustrated me was the fact that if I saw an opponent, I had to fire upwards and watch that pellet take its time, <laughs> curve upwards in a in an arc before hitting, hopefully hitting the target before the target moved off. And after two games of that, I I got frustrated. And so when I first met both you and Rex at um, at that game set at Fiscor where, you know, one of my clients wanted uh, war games as their team building, I got hooked because I love the fact that it could, it could fly straighter and further than the paintball could. Now, Rex, uh, let me turn back to you and, and ask you, um, are there training applications uh, that Airsoft can bring to a serious player? Ah, uh, marami. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just say, uh, well, the way we approach airsoft, or the way we approach our brand of game, the AGL, the AGL game, was to bring in as many skills as you know, or practice as many skills as you know. Yung field skills, survival skills. Even uh, mga technical rescue skills, mm. anything that you can bring into the game, 
if you know camping, if you know swimming, if you know rock climbing, or you can you can engage in the game as an individual, or you can engage in the game as part of a team. You right. can be doing portion, you know, pe- um, learning teamwork mm-hmm. and cohesiveness, discipline, you know, individually and as a group, and you know, working towards a goal. Mm-hmm. You are gonna that, those kind of things. Now, I'd like to throw a, an idea at you, Rex, because I've always felt that. If airsoft had somehow been included in, say, ROTC, ROTC curriculum or CAT curriculum, I'd bet more people would want to be a cadet and not try to get themselves exempted. Uh, because after all, there's not much that you can learn from parades and, and keeping your boots shiny and your buckle shiny. Uh, it won't keep uh, you alive. <laughs> well, I'm um, uh medyo medyo abstract kasi yun eh. Kasi some people I don't know if you're one of those guys who ask the question what do you learn from marching? Yeah. <laughs> you can learn a lot from marching. Okay. But first and foremost you learn discipline. Hmm. If you cannot, if you cannot force yourself to do marching, what else can you ask of yourself? All right. And why why do they march? To move uh, any number of people, particularly the bigger the number of people, efficiently from one place to the other, right? and keep them intact. Yes. But the concept kasi is lost on most, other, most people so they don't see why you have to march. Yeah. Or when you're marching with, with precision, you learn to work with others alongside you. In front, back, your side. You march at the same time. You walk at the same. You walk at the same pace. You your steps are measured the same as everyone else, diba? And then you 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 have to memorize a lot of drills so that you can do it properly. Right. You need discipline. You need patience. You need perseverance. Uh, like you, uh, I underwent the uh, the COCC training, and then I loved that because we were taught a lot of very practical skills, like you know, assembly, disassembly, uh, in the dark, blindfolded, uh, jungle survival stuff. When I no 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 okay, when I was freshman college, lined up in the ROTC desk. Yung, yung sergeant said, you know, Boy, ganda ng sunak mo. Lagay. <laughs> <laughs> Lalagay ko siya sa banda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry ka. Sir, anywhere else but the band. <laughs> 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 I'd always say uh, okay. I could have I could have moved well must be so I I actually uh didn't have to convince myself to go through with COCC because I preferred learning something more than the usual the typical cadet. Eh? Agreed. Uh, I was of the same mind too. Yeah, but the thing is, nga kasi, um, my mindset was that I I want to learn something more than just marching around. Yes. But <laughs> <laughs> nagbago yung ano eh, nagbago yung perspective ko kasi when 
as an officer. Right. That's when I learned why we were married. Yes. And then I had to look back on my days I was part of a drill platoon. And we could not have done it if kundi kami mataga kung wala kami disiplina. Diba? That's right. Kundi kami, maru- kundi kami marunong sumunod sa ano, orders. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, Not the problem with airsoft. Mm-hmm. Okay. First eh, walang structure. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Um, the video we just uh, saw a while ago uh, focused so much on capture the flag, which is of course fast-paced and is pretty much a free for all. They may, there may be some team effort, but not much. Uh, well, again, yes and no. I say you have to look at it like a chessboard. Mm. You must have a play in mind. Mm. Who goes forward? Who stays back? Who take? Who you assign? Who does what? Oh, I mean like football. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the sacrifice ask, is good. Let me ask on. Um, you went through ROTC yourself in USD, mm-hmm. right? Uh, mm-hmm. What's your take on, um, on on the topic so far? Well, it, it's like this. In our R, our ROTC back in MS twenty one, MS twenty two, twenty three, right. twenty four. Mm-hmm. It was always the march, the standing formation, yeah. notes taking. Actually, there were tests, but they will just give you the answer. It's like the question what? number one is the answer. <laughs> okay. We, <laughs> we don't know. We just, and we, and we would sometimes volunteer as MP because as MP, you get to move around because you're the one getting the merienda, the order oh. for the COVID, order yeah, for the I... sopa. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, there, there, there wasn't much any learning. Okay. Oh. Now, when we had the live firing at the Fort Bonifacio, right, going down, it, it was the old Fort Bonifacio back then. Hmm. And I was annoyed to the instructor who was actually it. It wasn't the, the instructor. It was just one of the CAT of uh, ROTC officers. He would hit each one of us for misfiring or not be able to handle the M16. Okay. And it was my, because it was my first time to see a live order and said, uh, how, how do I charge this thing? And he whacked me on the helmet oh, and he yeah. said, you should have known. <laughs> at the top of my head, at the top of my head said, if only you, ta- you taught us. Right. <laughs> and there were, he was screaming all the time because Miss Jam don't know how to charge the handle, don't know how to put the magazine. It was a, it was a full bar. <laughs> he, he, he kept shouting and, and and there was there wasn't no technical learning to say the no. least. It was mostly just for the idea of be able to to pass wow. by right. attendance the MS twenty one twenty two twenty eight. Yeah, Rex and I, we we are more acquainted with the M1 Garand, so we, we had our ears ringing for three hours after that. So, <laughs> yeah, um, we we did have some. I'm sure in UP we were taught the windage and the elevation thing, and then of course how to use the sight picture. But you know, when when you start to hear the shots go off and you see the the empty brass. <laughs> flying right in front of you and you're scared to death that it'll singe your skin uh, <laughs> it's bloody loud and um, you can't hear yourself think after <laughs> but you know what it, uh, on that basis I'm glad I wasn't with the battery because when they fired off those 105 how was <laughs> uh, I'm sure their hearing was far more compromised than ours were <laughs> Oh, what uh, battalion were you part of? Oh? Yeah. I was battalion S4. Oh, okay, so you were the uh, sergeant for for 
for for trading s4 supplies uh, <laughs> yeah uh, i was s1 uh meaning a staff sergeant um during my nco time before i transitioned over executive to, yeah well in my case i was i, know, I had I had uh, I was handling logistics for four companies. Wow! All right, <laughs> that must have given you uh, a, a lot of headaches. I'm sure. <laughs> you know, I, I know what Con is talking about with the merienda and stuff because you know it's we can't remember who to give the change back to. <laughs> <laughs> when you end up with a, a bag full of kanino kaya itong barya? Kanino kaya? Ay, bahala ka na. Hindi ko na maalala ko sige. <laughs> Divvy up the spoils. So, uh, well, ano nga lang kasi yung I know the problem with with ROTC in general. Um... They hold ROTC mainly just for compliance. Hmm. They just go through the motions. Hmm. Now, it would be interesting if we incorporate Airsoft, but then um, I think and I feel that uh, incorporating Airsoft into, into, uh, into ROTC activity and training would create its own problems. Eh. Indeed. Particularly, may, 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 mga, may mga interests involved na dyan. Eh. Mm. As you can imagine, that's big money. Yes, it, yes. Medyo mahal nga. <laughs> no, no, that's big money for somebody who's going to supply the equipment. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah Who's going to buy the equipment? Yeah. The school or the individual? Mm. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> diba? Yep, see, even now, diba? just the, the boots alone, uh, the BDU uh, is already an issue for the less fortunate students in schools. And so to to require them to to purchase something like that would, would be uh, almost would be almost uh, cruel. Give you an example din. I uh, don't know kung alam to ni Con, eh. Did I mention talking to some higher-ups in um, sa Marines? Hmm. And yung yung kausap namin must have slip, let it out. Na they were exploring a tie-up between the Marines and airsoft groups, no? or incorporating airsoft into their training, because they wanted to find justification to spend their budget allocation. Oh, good grief. <laughs> uh, in other words, help us to use it up, or something like that. Yes. Oh, man. Come here, no? The own Dumalabas din ang driving force no, kung ba, why they're even considering yourself because they could charge you off to the budget. Oh, that's sad. That, 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 that really is quite sad. Um, that shouldn't be the driving force at all. Kaya nga, ano ba araw TC? Well, reserve officers training course is supposed to prepare the future leaders of our armed services. Ano kasi, the moment you left, pinasok mo yung airsoft doon, yung focus ng cadets or even the officers themselves would shift to the equipment. Mm. I know the feeling. And to the game. <laughs> Right. Not to mo baka mo eh our TC is essentially a uh, an indoctrination program. Right. 
it's a recruitment program. Di ba? Yeah. And I don't know. I'm kind of scared to think what kind of officers they're going to get to recruit. You get them from airsoft players. Mm -hmm. Ah, I guess without without mentioning any teams or any names, uh, I I agree with you in the sense that um, over the years we've we've seen some really extreme uh, teams and really extreme behavior, and some fist fights break out at uh, at game sites because they couldn't take it. You know, in other words. <laughs> Napikon. Uh, so, yeah, and then if you if you bring that uh, kind of glory hound mindset over to uh, the the services, then that that would not be a very good thing for the men. Maybe the mission, but definitely not the men. So you try to protect both the men and achieve the mission. So, I, I hear you. I, I know what you're trying to say. Mm. Now, at this point, I'd I'd like to to ask both of you, where do you think is the future? Or what few, what direction do you think airsoft should take in the Philippines? Hard question. Because, ano nga Whereas when we started, iba yung culture, eh. mm. iba yung mindset. Right. Back then we were just playing a game. Yes. And that's why the reason why we call it, or we we adopted the survival game. In the term survival game is the goal was not to get shot. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was. It, it's not like the goal is to shoot the other guy. The goal is not to get shot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But ngayon, iba yung mindset eh. They put, they uh, put on a 3,000 round mag. And you sit up all on one guy within 10 seconds. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Almost like a Gatling gun, yep. Yung, ano, it's an arms race. <laughs> Marami na nga na Marami ng factors go into it. Hmm. Yung um, na, na mold yung players' mindset to into uh, an arms race, hmm. uh, PPE race, hmm. <laughs> cosplay race. Hmm. You know, uh, it's not just one thing anymore. Hmm. Meron ng Meron ng subcultures yung ano eh. Meron ng subcultures within the group. Sure enough. So in other words, it's 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 evolved to the point where it's no longer recognizable as the original uh, purpose or intent of the sport. So um, maybe we could talk about uh, what we wish wasn't going on. Like that's that's right. That's one of them, where it's it's become an arms race. Um, let me ask God, uh, what would make you become more active again, if ever? Okay, for me, the quality, the quality of the game itself. At the same time, the GMRC of the players. Old school, but definitely weights a lot. Because, you know, I came there for camaraderie. I didn't came there to be hurt. Yeah. I came I came there to to um, practice my skills, have fun. I totally agree with what Rex said. We should always go back to the idea of, you know, the old school ways of this is a game, this is a sport. Just have fun. Don't yeah. go out there to have that arms race thing mm -hmm. because that defeats the purpose of the sportsmanship, the camaraderie, because the gun itself is hurting other people instead True. of, you know, the person learning skills, building camaraderie, building friendship. Mm. So it's really time for the 
sports to go back to the old school ways of proper mindset the the skills of learning and at the same time you know honesty in the game sportsmanship uh, uh, one of the things that attracted me to AGL uh, during the days of Piscor and and even later on to Praetorian was the predominance of gentlemen players, those who were very honest and, you know, you, you, they'd get hit in the pinky and they'd admit it and it'd walk off. Um, and they certainly tried to avoid headshots and, and they were very careful about not going full auto if they can, if they can help it. So um, I, I still value my membership in, in that group. And maybe uh, to me, I'm with Rex in the sense that it shouldn't turn into an arms race, but it should turn into the sort of sport that encourages uh, fitness, um, survival skills, uh, tactics, uh, cleverness or strategizing over, say, who's got the bigger gun, who's got the more ammo, who's got the nicer looking BDU. Um, it, it, it just takes the fun out of it. So. Uh, let me just ask if there were like um, there was a bit of advice that you could give to a future to a future generation of players because let's face it we're all aging me included <laughs> and, and and I realize every time Tonya tries to call for people to go <laughs> to the game site to play uh, fewer and fewer people are going and you know um, some of us have transition to scuba diving others have gone to mountain biking uh, rex is is a, is a very good archer himself so um Lars anderson we, we've moved so we definitely i think need to entice another generation of younger players hopefully uh giving them the same mindset of being sportsmen gentlemen and focus not on the equipment, but on the benefits, the game itself. So, um, who'd like to start with um, any advice you'd like to give to somebody who'd like to join the sport? Rex? Almighty first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Well, <laughs> pareho lang nung kay Kon, no? I mean, go back to basics. Hmm. Old school. Yes. In, in a, um, for a long time, I mean, as, in as long as we could push the idea, we tried to even it out between new players and old players, mm-hmm. where nobody had some such a big advantage. So uh, now this. An arms race because the newbies want to go into the game trying to even out the odds. Eh? Hmm. And the only way they can, they see it is if they would armor themselves up and then bring several thousand rounds. <laughs> I've got the price over 600 FPS. Oh, good grief. You know? <laughs> yun, 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 eh. And Unfortunately, the uh, organizers and uh, businessmen selling guns, parts, and upgrade services are not helping. Right, yeah. The, the modification process, yes. Yeah. It, it got to be na, ano, na, na, ganun din yun, eh. in Japan, even though the merong ASGK regulations. Mm. Meron pa rin pasaway eh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what they did was they would sell the guns in basic configuration. Okay. Na yung regulation compliant. Mm-hmm. And then modif- after sales, modify it. They would sell parts. Dun sila kumikita eh. Right. They would sell parts, do Resid- modifications. Yeah, residual income. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's why in the end, you know what the Japanese government did? Ang hinuli nila is anybody who would sell modification parts, 
and offer services that would allow the gun to be modified above the prescribed regu- ano, limits. Dito, ganun din eh. Hmm. Yung mga sellers would push for M140 springs, M150 springs, better steel, better the tighter barrel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then they would sell chrono, so you can chrono in here, you can see that you, you shoot 600 every time. Oh, good grief. And then look, yung preponderance of box magazines with 3,000 rounds. Mm. Mm-hmm. What would a newbie with one magazine carrying 300 rounds? What are chances against somebody with 3,000? <laughs> right, yeah. What are chances of 300 rounds mo firing at, say, 400 FPS while this other guy is shooting 600 FPS in 10,000, no, 10 times as, uh, more supply? Diba? So, doon pa lang ang even na yung ano eh. Yes. Yung game organizer pa lang allowing that would make it uneven already. Agree. So, Agree. they would they would tell the newbie, oh, bili ka nito, bili ka nyan, bili ka nyan, upgrade ka dito, upgrade ka nyan, Panta- para magpantay kayo. Mm. Then, other guy would bring two box mags. <laughs> and they give that so if I'm, I'm, I'm getting you where you're going with this uh, correctly, um, you're, you're probably saying that anybody curious or interested to join should vet a team or an event first to make sure that the people who are organizing it or the team that is possibly going to join has a history of complying with rules or of uh, sportsman-like behavior rather than... Well- I'm not sure how we can get people to want to play uh, under the old rules. Mm. A lot of newbies would, but I don't know kung how long they will stay around if you kung a strictly regulated game. Mm. Okay. Okay. The, they'd be tempted. Eh. Mm. In a, in a problem, because um, before, it was easier for us to influence people or discipline people into following the rules because they had nowhere else to go. Right. So either you follow that or you don't get to play. In other words, my the way or highway. <laughs> yeah, my way or the highway. But then, all of a sudden, somebody comes up with SETEX. Mm. And let's mm. BC pets, whatever. Then they have other cho- they have choices. Mm. We don't know if we don't allow high FPS, we don't allow this, we don't allow that, but the other guy does, the players transfer. Mm. They have the option they they transfer up. Mm. Mm. And you'd be left with only those who really believe mm. true believers right uh, they die yeah <laughs> well true believers in this room right here including <laughs> Ray who, who couldn't be with us tonight yeah <laughs> uh, how about you con um what advice would you would you give to to new players okay two things first off is Sportsmanship that encompasses a lot of things. Good yeah. mindset, camaraderie, humility. Mm. And it go, all goes back again because when you're whenever you are in a game, you always practice sportsmanship. Mm. And that you always take that to any any place, any endeavor that you go to. Mm. However you call it, it always falls back to the idea of sportsmanship. Mm. And second is experiential. Experiential means you learn from experience. And this is one thing that I learned during my decades of playing. 
And in fact, this is my first time to to say to be outspoken in in my hobby since I'm not into social media or you know posting anything. Okay. Ever since that I played in airsoft, I always carried the idea. Of, you know, remember I said that airsoft back then is discreet. Yes. Up to this time, I practiced that discreet in me. I I, I didn't brag. I didn't wear anything to show. I didn't wear anything military insignia just to show off because I always reneged to the idea of you know being prudent, being discreet. Mm-hmm. And you know this idea of experiential is beneficial for those who would in the future be in another different end divorce because I'm going to say this airs of playing in AGL and in other games helped me to be a good firefighter because you know the rocking carrying the the SCBA yes which, uh, weights around 20 pounds at the most yeah. yeah. It was easy for me. It wasn't right. hard for me. It was because decades of rocking, marching mm. with and uh, uh, humping in the boonies with the uh, <laughs> with, with my rucksack. It was easy. The yeah. leadership skills I learned from uh, airsoft playing and playing with interacting with other teams, mm. and even the talking to the to the civilians because we would have meal sims back then. We when we had to impromptu talk to the locals. Mm-hmm. At the same time, you know, being this all geared up and somehow uh, surprising them. And other things is that resiliency. Mm-hmm. Playing in the in the boondocks with all those gears and just being accountable for yourself, it will help you in your endeavor as being a firefighter, search and rescue, starting up with starting up with small enterprise for your mm-hmm. business and even teaching because you have to be resilient and playing the sports teaches you resiliency. Again, it goes back to the idea of sportsmanship. So these are the two things that I really would like to say to the new players. Sportsmanship, experience. Okay, thank you so much, Con. And, and my own very brief take on this is that if you're interested to, to join the sport, uh, do go and choose good teams, teams that have a reputation for sportsmanship, as Con has been saying, and those that are not much into the arms race, as Rex has been saying. In other words, uh, join it maybe for the same reason that I did years ago. It's because I wanted to become physically fit. And, and thanks to Airsoft, I transitioned over to running. And so I started to join fun runs, half marathons, and and then uh, e- even in school I was into swimming. So uh, uh, and unlike Rex who did platform diving, <laughs> but you know I, I was into swimming a lot. You know, so uh, I joined it, and I encourage all of you young new players to join it more for the physical fitness aspect of it. And to carry with you that 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 mindset of being a gentleman, of being honest and humble, uh, because this sport will reward you with good friends, lifelong friends, friends who are still close to both Rex and to Con, uh, even up to now, who still uh, refer to to Rex as Almighty, and and there's a reason for that because he epitomized the, the gentleman in this particular sport. And so I'd like to, to take take time to thank Rex for taking time out to be on our show tonight and also Con for for doing his best uh, initially with his laptop, then with his smartphone, uh, <laughs> determined to join us tonight. Yes, and for all of it. our <laughs> friends out there, maybe a parting shot uh, from, from Rex, maybe. Um, would you like to, to greet anybody out there or... Or uh, uh, invite somebody to join a particular team. Well, no, th- I would I would tend to follow your advice to look for a good team. Uh, I'm not in any position to recommend anyone in particular at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I agree, you should really go into yourself as not as a 
an end all but yung as a gateway to to other things mm-hmm. uh, other sports other activities outdoor activities learning new skills mm-hmm. uh, putting them to good use mm-hmm. especially now where we have disasters you could use the skills you have, you you learn how true map yeah. reading orienteering jungle survival all of those yeah all of those yeah in uh, that was young that was the goal before eh? when you notice the group's name has no mention of airsoft mm-hmm. you know that's right <laughs> action games league airsoft is only implied mm-hmm. because the 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 logo would show would show somebody running with a flag with a gun mm-hmm. and a flag mm-hmm. and the other guy with the rifle supporting the guy running mm-hmm. teamwork that's right that's right the flag the goal to run with the flag the gun the guns themselves the airsoft guns are just tools yes In the end, that's how the old school guys looked at it, mm. and that's how I look at it. So, who knows? Maybe the Jedi should be back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope this show will will create the the force that awakens. Uh, yeah. Go on, how about you? Any any yeah. last words? Okay, to all the new ones out there who wants to try airsoft, you know, first start within yourself. You know, have a good mindset and don't be swayed by what you see in social media, by what your friends have or impose on you. Just have fun. Always have fun with the game. Don't be swayed that you need to buy this stuff. No, have fun. Be yourself. Uh, practice uh, sportsmanship. Start within yourself, then later on you're going to progress. And I'm speaking this from experience because decades of that, I was just a cannon fodder. It's fine. Then later I I develop myself. So again, find yourself. You know, do not be dissuaded by what commercialism and what your friends tell you. Have fun. Thank you so much, Con. Now, as I close tonight's uh, episode, I just like to in, uh, issue this invitation. On behalf of my team, that's Praetorian, and you can find us on Facebook. That if you're looking for a small, intimate team of people practicing this old school mindset of being sportsmen and being out there just for the fun, and uh, also learning skills at the same time, then do look us up and, and join us. Um, we're easy to find. All right. So with that, I'd like to wish everybody uh, a great night, and I do hope. You have safe playing, and um, when this pandemic is over, I'm, I'm sure there will be many opportunities for all of us. So tonight, once more, thank you to Rex Villarosa, call sign yes. Almighty, and Con Abraham, call sign Insect Man, <laughs> and your host Dino Santos, call sign Knife Man. All wishing bye, you Rex. a bye, great Dino. night. Bye, bye, Rex. Bye. Bye 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 b